Tonight at 10, an update on a bombing attack in London and the cleanup progress along I-10 in New Orleans East. Behind me, the kids are sitting around a make-believe campfire with their leader, LaSalle, and they're enacting a skit. We'll show you more of that at the end of the show. Now, our last story tonight is about an inventor. His name is Brooks Walker, and if you don't know him, you may be familiar with some of his inventions. They're things that are used around the house, the yard, or even your car. Now, he's been working on a five-wheeled car for some time now, but just can't seem to get it sold. Tonight, he has a buyer, our own Bob Sarlot. He'll get behind the wheel and take it for a spin. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Why does this car have five wheels? And even better, what in the world is this? Hi, I'm Bob Sarlot, and tonight, we're going to meet an inventor who, among other things, would like to see us all driving five-wheel cars. <laughs> Meet Brooks Walker, inventor. At age 82, he has 220 patents to his credit. He has more good ideas in a day than most of us have in a year. If I was a painter and had made as much money as I have inventing, I'd be quite famous, I think. So this is the old workshop, huh, Brooks? Right. Boy, it's kind of a little security conscious, I would think. Brooks has patents on everything from heavy-duty security locks to luggage with wheels. Some of his inventions are in common use, like an anti-smog device that's in every car built since 1970. Then there are his other inventions, the bizarre ones. First of all, Brooks, what is this? This is in all of your dictionaries. It's called a caltrop, C-A-L-T-R-O-P. Um, and Napoleon used it against the cavalry or against the barefooted uh, uh, enemy. During the Second World War, Brooks adapted this idea to a device that punctured airplane tires. The Allies dropped these things on enemy airfields to keep fighter planes grounded, but... The enemy could pick it up and use it against us and it made a very great problem about tire supply, but it was very effective. When one of his ideas falls flat, the last thing this man invents is an excuse. Take the five-wheeled car. He's been perfecting it for 50 years, but he has yet to find a buyer. The fifth wheel was supposed to make parking a breeze. It didn't catch on, but it did lead to another landmark invention. Brooks stumbled upon it while modifying a station wagon. So I uh, made some more space, lowered the floor down here, right. and then put the rear seat facing rear. And as far as I know, this is the first car in the United States with a rear-facing third seat in a station wagon. And you are partially responsible for making the children of America car sick, is this? I didn't invent that. Two heads may be better than one, but are five wheels really better than four? I had to find out. All right, here we are. Looks a little different so far because you didn't come up to parallel like you normally would, right? No, I'm going to show you how the parking device works. All right. Uh, now you lift it on the fifth wheel, it takes about seven seconds, and then when it's fully lifted, you put it in uh, forward, okay. and then drive in, and then the uh, back end Look goes through. just kind of sways right in there. Goes right into the curb. The problem is to get the rear end where you want it. Well, you know, <laughs> that's a problem we all have, and I'll tell you that, uh, Brooks, I, I feel like a driving instructor right here. I'll give you a 95 on getting into this parking place, okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ask for it by name, the five-wheel car. We could do this for days and days on end. Watching LaSalle is really interesting. Don't you feel like you're actually there when history is happening? Well, maybe not that, but these kids are fascinated by all this, and LaSalle has a pretty good French accent. He really does. In fact, all day I've heard the kids running around speaking French themselves. Everything is fantastique, well, fantastique. They're, they're having a good time now, but wait till tomorrow after they've been out here all night. Truly, truly. Now, they are having a great time, but now this is a learning experience, Eric, so I have a quiz for you. You mean I'm going to learn something? That's right. What is LaSalle's full name? Well, it's a long one, and I cannot remember it. It's Renee. Ne Robert Cavalier Sir de la Salle. That's impressive. Very good, huh? Okay, now Next let me question. ask you something else. Which king did he honor? That's easy, Louis XIV. Very, very good. And on what date did he actually discover and found Louisiana? Uh, it was in April. That's right, April the 9th, 1682. Well, see, now we've learned so much. You know what I... really have learned a lot, baby. What I'd like to see is these kids uh, tomorrow morning after they've been out here all night, they're spending the night out here, as we said earlier in the show, 
And uh, they've been laying on the ground under these little tents with the chiggers and the ants and stuff. I just hope none of them get scared in the night. Oh, you know, they probably won't because there'll be so many kids. They'll have a good time. They probably won't sleep a wink. That's right. Second through the sixth grade spent the night here or will be spending the night here tonight. I want to have a good time. Really should. Let's take a look at what's coming up on the show tomorrow. On Saturday's PM Special Edition, you'll meet Mary Fishback, who's training for the ultimate quest, a chance to compete in the 1984 Olympics. Then we'll enter a time capsule back to the 15th century and search for Christopher Columbus' lost ship, the Pinta. And we'll look for the world's longest suspension bridge. Mighty Mac is over five miles long. Well, that's our PM Magazine for tonight. Thanks for joining us. We hope you'll join us on the Saturday Special Edition tomorrow. And how should we say goodbye? Go ahead, Madame LaSalle. Uh -huh. Is that right? Yeah. They liked it. <laughs>